Happy Friday, everybody. It's Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson. We are at Carterville High School as the Carterville Lions and the Duquoina Indians open at the 2019 Southern Illinois River to River Mississippi Division Conference season right here tonight, Scott Hudson. Should be a good battle, this Duquoina team. You look at some of their starters. You, you, you will remember these names from football. Edward, Purcell, Mays. They've got some very good athletes on this team. They just finished up their Duquoina tournament. Uh, a little over a week ago, Carterville coming off a big, impressive win over West Frankfurt. And this is the first time that uh, these two teams will meet this year. And as you said, first conference game of the year. Well, they split the two games that they played a year ago. And uh, the first game of the, the matchup against DuCoin, it was at DuCoin. And Carterville came with come away with a 42-39 win. When the Indians traveled back to Carterville in January, they had an 11.161 to 50. This is probably, uh, historically, in the last handful of years that I've been watching and covering Carterville sports, probably one of the most physical games that the Lions play on the court every season. Well, I think both these teams, as I mentioned, have football players that are playing basketball. So part of that mentality goes from the field to the court. And they're usually very spirited battles. They're very, usually very close games. Yep. Um, you know, I would expect nothing less here tonight. This is your SIH pregame show here as the Carterville Lions get ready to take on the Ducoin Indians. Carterville comes into this game with a 1-4 and four record. Of course, uh, they dropped four games in the Pyramid Plus tournament, but then uh, got the big win over West Frankfurt a week ago, um, the last, or last Saturday, rather. Ducoin comes in with a 2-2 two and two, uh, uh, record. Um, they just had their tip-off classic at Ducoin. They beat Carmi White County 68-60 to to open the season. They also beat Redbud 61-46. to There are two losses to one of the top teams in Southern Illinois. Cairo, an 82-69 loss, and then to Massac County, a 68-59 loss. Massac County, one of the uh, top teams in the area. I think they're the number two seed in the El Dorado Holiday Tournament coming up right after the holidays, which we'll talk about at some point. But again, Duke Coyne's a very good team. They like to play physical. They've got some really good athletes. We talked about Mays, Edward, Purcell, all good players. But as we saw last week, Coach Hawkins is playing up to 11, 12 guys in every game. That should lend to fresher legs in the fourth quarter. You certainly would hope so. And uh I, I love the fact that he that he has such a deep bench that he can go to, especially with some of these uh, freshman players that we're seeing. Um, uh, you know, like Caden Hawkins. Um, we were just talking uh, during the JV game, which Ducoin won tonight, uh, 57 to 47. But but the valuable minutes that Caden Hawkins has picked up as a freshman, and you can see such a strong improvement in him in just the first two weeks of the season. Well, he's always been a talented player. He just needed the experience and the confidence. I think he's getting both of those over the last couple of weeks. And I think as the season goes along, you're going to see less of Caden on the JV team and more minutes on the varsity. So uh, Coach Hawkins has a very good problem. He's got a lot of kids that can come in and contribute off the bench. And as, as long as everybody on the team can accept their role, this team should be pretty good down the stretch. We'll go out and take our first break. I had a chance uh, just a few minutes ago to talk to Coach Shane Hawkins, talk about the uh, the game against West Frankfurt, talk about this matchup tonight. Also, Scott and I want to get into uh, on Wednesday, as he uh, uh, alluded to just moments ago, the El Dorado Holiday Tournament uh, bracket came out on Wednesday, <laughs> and you're going to love it. We'll have all the details for you. This is your SIH pregame show for Carterville Lions basketball on News Radio WJPF. We kick off the tournament at 8.30 Thursday the 26th. 8.30 in the morning. Ten o'clock game if we lose. Yeah, 
Yes, sir. If you're watching online, thank you so much. Hope you have a good night. Any dead air that you hear, it's not technical issues. It's just uh, something's playing back at the studio. And we can't pipe that down on the live stream. Brian, you can actually take a break after the coach, too. I think we're going to get two more breaks in before tip.
Back in Carterville High School on a rainy, dreary night outside. Uh, I'm glad to have you for some warm indoor basketball here. Uh, as the Lions prepare to take on uh, the DuCoin Indians Conference opener for both teams here tonight, Coach Shane Hawkins, Scott Hudson, was talking about the athleticism of this DuCoin team that we're going to see tonight. They, they are an outstanding group of players. Yeah, they're just really good athletes. They, as I said, most of them play football. Uh, they've played basketball for several several years. And they're going to they're gonna play hard. And Carnival's got to match their intensity right from the, the opening tip. You know, I think Carnival starts offensively. Their offense has to go from the inside to the outside. You got you have players like Sumner, like Downen, like Garby. Make Pinkney, or excuse, make Ducoin guard you inside the paint because I don't think they stack up well against those three Carnival players I just mentioned. So if they can get the inside game going, it should leave the guards open on the outside. You talk about Austin Garby, Preston Sumner. They both had 11 points. They were our uh, co-player uh, of the games against West Frankfurt. If we could get Garby, get Sumner, and get Eli down and up there uh, scoring double digits, 15 points a game, look out. Yeah, I think this Carnival team, as of right now, they don't have to have somebody that averages 16 to 17 points a game. They can have players that average 10 to 12 a game. It'd be just fine because as they did last week, they played 12 players, 11 of which scored. So that gives Coach Hawkins a lot of leeway on matchups and knowing when to get players out when they need a break. Here on our SH, SIH pregame show, Wednesday um, afternoon, the El Dorado Holiday Tournament bracket came out. Carterville came out with a number five seed in this tournament. Number one is Fairfield. Number two is Massac County. Number three, El Dorado. Um, number four is Heron and Carterville. Number five, we're going to open up at 8.30 in the morning. Going to play Norris City in that, that uh, tournament opener. We love that tournament. Oh, it, it's a great... Don't like 8.30, but we no, love it. Don't like 8.30, but I guarantee <laughs> you, if you get there at 8.30 or you're there for the 10 o'clock game, the place will be packed. Yep. They'll be packed all day. It's a great atmosphere for high school basketball. Looking forward to it and, and looking at the teams in the tournament. I know Cardinal's only a five seed. I think Cardinal's good enough that they can get to the championship round. Now it looks like they may have a match, a, a rematch with Heron in, in game number two, but still... With what Carnival has the potential, I think they can make a run at the title there. I gave you the top five, and number six seed in that tournament is Carmine. Number seven is Anna Jonesboro. Number eight is West Frankfurt, and then you have eight unseeded teams. We're going to take on, Carterville's going to play Norris City, Omaha. Infield. Infield. There we go, NCOE. You have Edwards County, Hamilton County, Gallatin County, Harrisburg, Carrier Mills, Harding County, and Vianna, the unseeded teams in that tournament. It's all going to kick off December, excuse me, December 26th. It'll run December 26th, the 27th, and 28th. Carterville plays the opening game at 8.30 against NCOE. If they lose that game, we'll go back at 10 o'clock that night. <laughs> and Let's make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, and but if they win... They'll play on the 27th, and that's that's how we hope things go. We're going to go, on and gonna go ahead and take another break here on our SIH pregame show as we're just moments away from the tip-off between the DuQuoin Indians and the home team, Carterville Lions, here on News Radio WJPF.
We're just moments away from tip-off here between the Carterville Lions and the DuCoin Indians. Carterville comes into this game 1-4 on the season after a win uh, last Saturday night over West Frankfurt, 58-44. Leading scores in the game, as we mentioned earlier, Austin Garby, Preston Sumner, but you also had um, uh, Carson Pearson that had nine points. You had Connor Hawkins with five. Eli Downen added six. Got to get that balanced scoring in the book again tonight. Yeah, I think each and every night you could see a different leading score for Carterville. You know, Eli Downen coming into this season was the unquestioned leader of this team offensively as far as points scored. He's probably going to average 15 to 16, 17 points a game. And, of course, he's going up against some tough competition in the Pyramid Plus turn. But I expect him to, to have a big game tonight as, as Bryce Sanderson. I think, I think he's due to break out. So uh, this, this team's fun to watch because you just really don't know game to game who's going to be the best player. Both teams are back out on the floor as they go through their uh, final moments of just shooting around and getting loose. They've had their chats with the coaches in the locker room, and uh, uh, we are just about set here for uh, uh, River to River Conference action from Carterville High School, the SIH pregame show, and uh, we appreciate it. If you'd like to watch the game, you can uh, head to uh, YouTube and you can search Ducoin Indians versus Carterville Lions. You'll get the radio call along with the video stream, which is kind of cool, and I uh, um, uh, hope you enjoy that. But a uh, nice crowd here tonight on a Friday night. Last Saturday, of course, the Carbondale uh, Holiday Lights uh, Parade was going on. The crowd was down a little bit. But uh, Duke Coins traveled well, and Carterville's filling up the other side. Carterville will have their first road game of the season tomorrow night at McCracken County High School just uh, west of Paducah, where they'll be taking on Callaway County. And then next Friday night, Carterville will travel to AJ for another conference game. So all this, all these, this home cooking early in the season is going gonna, is gonna to switch in the second half of the season. I think Carterville plays eight of their last 11 games on the road for the year. And Scott has promised he's buying Olive Garden after the game. <laughs> it's a 4.30 start tomorrow afternoon, by the way, uh, here on News Radio WJPF. We're going to go on and take our final break. That's been your SIH pregame show. Carterville Lion basketball is next on News Radio WJPF. Welcome back to Carterville High School, Friday night. Conference action here. Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson. We're glad to have you with us as the Lions prepare to take on the DuCoin Indians. DuCoin comes into the contest 2-2 two and two on the year. Carterville comes in with a 1-4 and four record after a win a week ago over West Frankfurt. The, Car the DuCoin Indians are coached by uh, Jason James. And the starting lineup now be announced for Coach James and the DuCoin Indians. They're going to go with... Uh, their senior, their, you, and Scott said this in the pregame, names that we've heard for three and four years with this Indian squad 
and it doesn't change. Um, they're going to go with Caden Mays, the 5'6 senior. Um, Dasani Edward, the 5'7 senior. You also have uh, Braden Purcell. He's a senior, the big guy, 6'4". He'll be the one in the paint and out on the wing. And then you have Wade Roberson, the junior, the 6'1". And here... Ducoin has a 6'7 sophomore. He's not going to get the start tonight. He played in the JV game, but his name is Maurice Washington, and uh, he's just a sophomore. <laughs> he's a big boy. <laughs> he had a pretty good game in the JV game, so I would expect at some point if Cotterville really hurts Ducoin on the inside, you're going to see Mr. Washington come in the game at some point. They are doing a uh, pregame presentation here. It looks like it's going to the... Uh, Southern Illinois, um, uh, what do you call that? The uh, officiating uh, yeah, the association. Officiating association, I guess. Yep. And uh, coach, uh, uh, athletic director and football coach Brett Dial out there uh, with the three officials that are working the game here tonight. So that's been uh, the delay. Ed Smith on the PA as he goes through the read. They do this every year where they make a contribution to the uh, Southern Illinois. Uh, officials Association, and that's what this is here tonight. And they do great work with that money as well in, in giving it to, to various organizations. Yeah, it's all about giving back. And, you know, the officials, you know, they take more abuse than anybody in any sport, especially in high school. But, uh, you know, they're here to do a job. They do a very good job. And it's nice to see that uh, all the schools help out with this uh, organization. Especially the officials that work at Patriot football games. <laughs> Yeah, I think they somehow they get it. They get two checks, one from the NFL and one from Robert Kraft. I've never understood that. I knew that was coming. But uh, now uh, we are ready with the uh, starting lineups as they're going to go on and give you the uh, Ducoin Indians. Ed Smith to the crowd here at Carterville. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 702, a proud sponsor and supporter of Carterville Lions Sports, IBEW, Local 702, providing a better lifestyle for members and a better life for all. And hopefully, well, ho I, you may notice that by the end of the game, uh, Mr. Scott Hudson will sound like Barry White <laughs> as uh, he's fighting the... The throat cold thing tonight? Yeah, I, I, I refuse to go on the DL. I'm playing hurt. <laughs> and uh, we both have throat lozenges up here, and we are ready to go. Finally, the uh, last starter, it's going to be uh, the 5'11 junior, Brian Winters, that's going to get the start for Jason James. So for the DuCoin Indians, Caden Mays, Dasani Edward, Braden Purcell, Brian Winters, and Wade Roberson. DuCoin has some very quick guards. And that's Carterville's guards are going to have to to uh, play very well defensively, and Carterville's going to have to do a good job of getting back on defense after a missed shot because I'm sure DuCoin will try to get it and go with this smaller lineup. I asked Shane Hawkins, as you heard moments ago, what's his starting lineup? He said, I don't really know. Depends on what Coach uh, Jason James does. If he goes small, we're going to probably go small as well. So as uh, we prepare to see who uh, Coach has on the starting lineup. It looks about like the normal starters. It'll be Carson Pearson, the 5'8 uh, senior. He's going to be wearing number 23 tonight. Also, for the Lions, it will be Bryce Anderson, the 5'8 uh, junior, the 6'4 junior, Eli Downen, the first to be announced. It'll be Nicholas Laird, the 5'11 senior, and then uh, in the paint, it'll be the 6'1 junior, Preston Sumner. So for the Lions, it will be Pearson, Laird, Anderson, Downen, and Sumner. And then you can pretty much count on the number six coming off the bench will be Austin Garvey. Austin had 11 points in his first game, and he was excited to be on that floor against West Frankfurt after missing the whole pyramid tournament. Yeah, and also Garvey's a kid that doesn't play football, so you knew he was chopping it a bit <laughs> to finally play something, and he played very well in his first game. Yes, he did. As the Carterville cheerleaders are doing their welcome cheer to the fans to our right. Carterville in the home whites, of course. Ducoin in the road reds with the black numbers. Ducoin will be moving from right to left on your radio dial. The Lions will be moving from left to right. They get their final little chat. From the head coaches, Coach Shane Hawkins around his Lions, Coach Jason James 
around the Indians. The officials are on the floor. Cheerleaders are set. The crowd is set. And uh, we have Carterville Lions basketball for you here on News Radio WJPF. Thank you so much for joining us. The lights dim around the perimeter. Players are ready to go. And we're going to have the tip. It's going to be Preston Sumner for the Lions going against Brayden Purcell, the 6'4 senior for the Indians. A little bit of debris on the court. And we are ready to go. Ball's in the air. It's tipped out of bounds. And it's probably going to tip it again, I would think. Yep. Looked like it was hit by both. So we'll try again. As we mentioned, Brayden Purcell, he's a 6'4 senior for DuCoin, going up against Sumner, who can really jump for the Lions. He's only 6'1", but the Indians control the tip as it winds up in the hands of Dasani Edwards, gets it to Purcell off the rim. His shot's no good, and Carterville gets the first rebound of the game. Bryce Anderson brings it across midcourt, gives it to Eli Downen. Downen. Top of the circle, oh, reverses back, goes into the paint, and he kind of fell awkwardly. I think he stepped on a foot, and uh, but he appears okay. He turned the ball over, and it's going to belong to the Indians. I think Carson Pearson's got a new number now, 23. He is wearing number 23, so the Indians have the ball. And bringing the ball across the timeline is Brian Winters. Gets it to Caden Mays. He drives, leaves it. Ball over, heads over to the right side on the right wing. Once again, that's Brian Winters. Takes it into the paint. Top of the key. Leaves it for Dasani Edward. Edward kicks to the right side. Purcell in the corner. Now back up top to Winters. Winters to Purcell. He takes it into the lane off the block. Short, shot is short. Gets his own board. Puts it up off the rim. No good. And Carterville's Bryce Anderson comes away with the rebound. Two quick rebounds for Bryce Anderson. Still no score. Just over a minute gone, and the ball is tipped out of bounds off of the Indians. Duke Coyne, when they have the ball, they're looking to score quickly. They're, they're not in a patient mode. Carterville has it just below us here. Anderson takes the handoff from Laird. Back to Laird. On the baseline, his pass is tipped out of bounds. It's off of Brian Winters, the 5'11 junior guard for Duke Coyne. Anderson will trigger the inbounds. Carterville moves. Inbounds pass comes to Laird. Skip pass to the left wing to Pearson. Now to Anderson in the corner. Off the wing, that's Eli Downen. He has Wade Roberson on him. Nice pass to Laird into the paint, but he traveled with the ball as he ran into Brian Winters. Turnover number two on Carterville. Yeah, good play by Winters. He, he, he read that play like a, a football player would. Carterville, two possessions, two turnovers. No score, 6.30 remaining here in the first quarter. As we said uh, in the pregame show, these two teams split their two games last year. Carterville picked up a 42-39 win in the first match up and 61-50 Duquoin in the second game last year. But that was a year ago as the Indians shot from the right baseline is good for Wade Roberson. 2-0 Indians at the six-minute mark here of the first quarter. Anderson, excuse me, third turnover on the Lions is Bryce Anderson's handoff was taken by the Indians. There's a whistle and a foul on Carterville. That's going to be on Eli down in the first on Eli, the first team foul. Eli's been playing with two, three fouls early in contests pretty much a season kick out pass to the right corner the shot taken from there no good rebound comes off to Anderson once again three rebounds for him in the first two minutes of the game down and now to the left wing that's Nick Laird reverses gets it back to down and down and little short jumper from the right elbow it's off the iron goes out of bounds and it will belong to the DuCoin Indians well, to say Carterville starting off slowly would be an understatement. Three turnovers, a missed shot. But, but Ducoin only has a 2 nothing lead. And this is, this is the history of Ducoin this year. Starting off slow, trying to get their feet under them. 
And in all five games, had early turnovers early in the game. As Ducoin has the ball in the front court. That's Purcell, puts it up off the glass, rims out, no good, battles for the board, it goes out of bounds. And they're gonna say it's Carterville basketball as the student section for Carterville on the far side gives a big cheer. There was some contact between Purcell and Sumner. Purcell won the foul call, but he wasn't going to get it. So on the floor, it's Pearson, Anderson, Downen, Laird, and Preston Sumner, the original starting five. Downen kicks it to Laird to the corner. Laird dribbles around, spins, leaves it for Downen, drives the baseline, loses his footing, got fouled as it was Wade Roberson that got into him. That's going to be the first foul on Ducoin. First team foul on the Indians. Yeah, Ducoin's doing a very good job defensively, getting up in the uh, in the Carterville players' faces, not giving Carterville much room to move, maneuver. Inbound pass goes to Preston Sumner. He hands it back to Bryce Anderson. He reverses, gets the ball to uh, Sumner, and he's fouled from behind. And it's Braden Purcell, the six-four senior for Ducoin, that got into the back of. Sumner, second team foul on the Indians, so Austin Garvey is going to check in for his uh, first action tonight. He replaces Eli Downen, who leaves the floor. Laird takes the inbounds pass, gets a lane, drives, gets fouled. Actually, they say he traveled on the pass. That is four turnovers here on Carterville in the first four minutes of the game. Cardinals not taking advantage of Duke Coyne's poor shooting here early in the game. They still trailed 2-0. Behind the neck pass is left for Caden Mays. Over to the right side, and we got a travel. That's going to be the first turnover on Duke Coyne here in the game. This Lions broadcast brought to you by SIH, a comprehensive network of care. You can visit online, visit SIH.net. Connor Hawkins checks in, replacing Nick Laird. Preston Sumner remains on the floor. Carterville ball. It's a 2-0 game. The Indians on top at the 4-15 mark of the first. A low-scoring game is an understatement. Anderson's going to launch a long three off the back of the iron. No good. Fights his way in onto the floor. Almost got the rebound, but it comes away to the Indians. There goes Brian Winters. Going to take it the length of the floor. Left-hand layup. No good. Off of Austin Garvey. Had it right in his hands. And the ball is going to belong to the Indians. Another turnover. Yep. Garvey on had it. On the Lions. Dropped it out of bounds. First one to ten wins. <laughs> I don't know, though. We might be here on 10-30. That's true. Don't do that to us. The inbounds pass comes to Caden Mays. He's on the left wing. He's going to circle around to the top of the circle. Top of the key. Drives. Got away with a walk. No, he didn't get away with it. There was the call. Turnover number two on Ducoin. Sumner is having words with Purcell. He just got shoved by Mays. This, this game could get interesting. This is what we were talking about in the pregame show. Anderson has his pocket picked again. Another turnover. The other way. Hard foul by Austin Garby. Yep, this is getting chippy real quick. As Austin and uh, who was it he got into there? Was it Winters? Winters got in his face. It was a hard foul. He made, Garby made sure he wasn't going to make the layup. Caden Mays is going to be at the line, so they're going to call the foul on Garby. That's his first. So a lot of chirping going on all over the floor. One of the officials comes over to talk to Shane Hawkins. Hawk's not happy. And he's chirping at the official. Yeah. I think he's upset about winners getting up in the face of Garby. And I would say that's it as Mays makes the first uh, free throw. That's his first point of the game. It's a 3-0 game. Indians on top. Well, that perked everybody up. <laughs> I even had to stand up. Caden Mays, he's at the line. The second one is on the way. It's good. 4 nothing, Indians. Carterville basketball. 3.35 remaining here in the first quarter. It's a 4 nothing Indian lead. Bryce Anderson on the logo at midcourt. Gets it to Garby. Now to Sumner. Between the circles, left side to Bryce Anderson, left wing. 
Dribbles it top of the key to the paint. Puts it up. Little floater. Bryce Anderson's on the board. It's a 4-2 ball game. Yeah, Cardinal finally breaks the ice since the junior Anderson that does it. And, Car and Duquoin quickly into the front court. That's Purcell. He has it. Has Sumner on him defensively. I like that matchup right there. Well, that's going to be fun to watch all night. Caden Mays, the ball at the right wing. Leaves it for Edwards. His shot no good. And Austin Garby gets the board. Gets it to Anderson. His pass is tipped away. Sumner oh, and a travel is called oh, on man. Purcell. As Sumner and Purcell kind of tie up. They were just both going after the ball. I thought for sure they are going to call a foul on Sumner. I was too. And then Purcell went up to Sumner and bumped him. Now they're jawing. Officials better get on it here shortly. <laughs> if you went Christmas shopping tonight, I suggest you get to Cardinal High School. There we go. We got a whistle away from the play, and it's going to be on Caden Mays. I think he tied up with Bryce Anderson before the ball could be inbounded. Caden says, what did I do? Three team fouls on DuPoint, two on Carterville. It's 245, Garby has it right wing. He has Wade Roberson on him. The pass is tipped out of bounds off of DuPoint. It's going to belong to the Lions right here below us. Boy, the intensity's picked up here in the last minute and a half. Yeah, Cardinals got to, they can't get caught up in the moment. They've got to no. settle down offensively and run their offense. They trail for 2 240 on the first quarter clock. Pass into the paint, but that wasn't a good inbounds pass, but I think time was running out. It's yeah, going to be off of Ducoin, and it's going to stay. A, actually, they call a foul. Yeah, winner's over the back, I believe. Winner's over the back of Pearson. Winners picked up his first foul, fourth team foul on DuCoin. Sumner's going to get a breather. And I think that's a good move by Coach Hawkins because Sumner is very emotional right now, and you've got to calm him down a little bit. Eli down and replaces Sumner. Connor Hawkins on the floor now. Carterville has Garby, who has the ball, top of the circle, takes it in the paint. Nice little skip move, lays it up, up with the right hand. Garby gets the bucket. We have a tie ball game, 4-4. Garby played like a guard there. Man, little skip, hop, jump, and he was good to go as Caden Mays drives, dishes it to Dasani Edward. His three-pointer, no good. And Bryce Anderson, that's got to be five, five or six rebounds for Anderson. Carson Pearson left wing, now to Downen. He takes it, balls off the foot. They're going to say he kicked it. Turnover on the Lions, and it'll belong to... You can tell Eli just is not really comfortable right now. He's he's trying to force some things. Let the game come to you, big man. Oh, nice move by Caden Mays. Takes it to the rack, throws it up. No good. Connor Hawkins gets the board. Nice outlet pass to Eli Downen. To the low block, off the glass. Eli Downen is on the board. Carterville has the lead. 6-4 at the 150 mark. They've hit their last three shots from the field. And they're starting to heat up offensively. Six to four the score, a minute 40 remaining. Dasani Edward leaves it right side. His pass goes out of bounds. A charge. That's a charge on Edward. And the ball's going to belong to Duquoin. And Edward's now talking to Garby. Garby claps at his face. I don't know if we're in a basketball game or we're getting ready for a WWE match. <laughs> Carson Pearson checks out. Caden Hawkins replaces him. So on the floor, Connor and Caden Hawkins. Garby, Downen, Bryce Anderson. Minute 27. It's a 6-4, two-point lead for the Lions. Bryce Anderson tries to get it to, uh, to Garby. On the block, his shot. He's fouled and will go to the line and shoot free throws as it's going to be Brian Winters with foul number two for the Indians. Garby's a man possessed right now. It's the 16th foul on the Indians. Austin Garby, who scored 11 points in his season uh, debut against West Frankfurt last Saturday. One of Iron Joe's lawn care and stove removal stars of the game, along with Preston Sumner, misses the first free throw. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Home Renew, serving all of Southern Illinois. Protect what matters most with Home Renew. Roofing, siding, storm damage, repairing gutters, giving you peace of mind. Call 
Austin Garmy at the line with free throw number two. Rims out no good. And a push foul on Connor Hawkins. As he was battling for the board and got into the back of Wade Roberson. Third team, third team foul now on Carterville. They lead by two. Took the lead at the 150 mark of the contest. Ducoin has it. Caden Mays to the right elbow. Now to the right wing. That's Braden Purcell. Into the paint. Ball's on the floor. Tied up. It's going to belong to the Lions. Turnover on the Indians. I've only got them for three. I got them for five. Okay. I've, there was a lot going on. Yeah, he put the ball down to near the floor. Carnival just tied it up. 61 seconds on the, the first quarter clock. He lied down and breaks the timeline. Up top. Now to the right left wing. That's Caden Hawkins. He has Caden Mays on him. Two Cadens, no waiting. Garvey drives the baseline, gets tied up as it was Wade Roberson with the reach in. That's a seventh team foul to coin, so Carl will be going. It had locked up. I just reset it, so should be good. All tied at six as we head to the second quarter. Carterville and the DuCoin Indians, Scott Hudson. Yeah, Carnival shot 50% in the first half, but they only took six shots. Only 18% shooting for DuCoin, but they took 11 shots and hit both their free throws. Car DuCoin has the ball and he goes out of bounds off of uh, the Lions. For Carterville, it was Austin Garmy, Brian Sanderson, and Eli Downen with buckets from those six points for DuCoin, it was Caden Mays that hit a pair of free throws. Dasani Edward and Wade Roberson with a field goal each. DuCoin's brought their big sophomore in Washington now, so that's who Down will be matched up with. The big 6'7 against uh, the 6'7 sophomore for DuCoin against the 6'4 junior for Carterville. And ends basketball on the far side. Caden Mays behind the back. He leaves it for Jaden Smith. His shot is short. Chases down the rebound, kicks it out to the right wing. Wide open three for Dasani Edwards, and he buries it. He's got five in the game. And that's the first three-pointer of the contest. Nine to six, Indians on top. Anderson up top. He has Jaden Smith on him. Now to Garby. Now to Downen. Now nice give and go from uh, Nick Laird to Eli Downen. Eli has four, and it's a one-point game. Yeah, good job to get the ball to Eli when he had the, had the opening. They saw the uh, drive down the right side of the lane. The ball's just thrown up by Caden Mays, and he gets it to fall. He's got four, and it's back to a three-point, 11-8 lead for the Indians. Eli Downen in top of the circle to Laird. Little floater from about eight, no good. Garby fat battles for the rebound, throws it up, no good. Gets his own rebound, gets hammered from behind by Maurice Washington, and Austin Garby's going back to the line again. <laughs> Garby is so physical underneath, he's not going to be denied. And now he's going to go the free throw line, where he's been there three times tonight and has yet, yet to make one. And Washington's having to come out, the big guy for DuCoin. Looks like he hurt a knee or an ankle. He comes to the sideline just below us. DuCoin in the road reds. Carterville in the home whites. Austin Garby. And his fluorescent shoes will be at the free throw line. So there's a little bit of moisture on the floor. Officials get that taken care of. And now Garvey has the basketball in his hand. And that's free throws good. This line's broadcast brought to you by Tony Gates, State Farm, 
with more drivers than any other company, get a better state with Tony Gates and State Farm Insurance. Garvey second, too strong. Nice tip out by Nick Laird. Carterville controls the rebound. Wide open three from the left wing, no good by Pearson. And the rebound is controlled by Braden Purcell of the Indians. Sonny Edward, Jaden Smith, top of the circle. Now left side it goes to Purcell. Back to Edward between the circles. Right side they work it to Jaden Smith toward the corner. Brings it back up top to Edward. Back to Smith. Back to Edward between the circles. Left wing they go now. Purcell in the left corner. Carter will switch to a zone. Yes, they did. And Ducoin trying to figure it out right now. They turn the ball over. Nice job defensively by the Lions. Kind of caught Ducoin off guard. Can they convert? Garby on the right wing to Eli Downen. Now top of the circle it goes to Caden Hawkins. Garby now. Left wing they go to Nick Laird. Gets it down to Downen on the left low block. Up off the glass. Nice job by Eli Downen to convert that bucket. He has six and we're tied at 11. Well, it hasn't been easy for Downen, but he's done a very good job here in the second quarter. And he's really starting to get into the game. As we're tied, 5-25 remaining in the half. Duquoin basketball, Purcell tries to tiptoe the baseline, does, gets it over to the left wing. A wide open three is off the iron, no good. Battle for the board, down and controls for Carterville. Tied at 11 and a turnover, Duquoin winds up with it again. Almost a turnover on the Indians. Carterville has walk. eight turnovers now. Duquoin has just picked up their seventh that I have. Yep, I've got Carterville for eight. Whew. Sumner in, Garby out to get a breather. Good minutes from Austin Garby in his second game of the year. I think even the officials needed to take a break there for a second. They get the ball in to Caden Hawkins, who just checked into the contest. Preston Sumner as well back into the game. Has the ball, gets it to Pearson. Pearson left wing, it goes to Laird. Nice fake by Laird. 12-footers, good. Nick Laird, his first bucket of the game. Carterville's heating up. 13-11, they have a two-point lead. Good job by Laird. Not to come into the paint with a big man ward, just stop and pop. Take what they give you, that little short jumper. to be there all night. Left wing, uh, basketball. For Ducoin. Skip pass to the right side. Into the game now is Jacob Green for Ducoin. The pass down low to Purcell. He's able to convert his first bucket of the game. And we're tied at 13. Caden Hawkins at the point for the Lions. Back to Laird. Skip pass or the bounce pass baseline to Pearson. His shot's too strong. And a rebound comes off to Dasani Edward for Ducoin. He takes it across the timeline. Right wing to Purcell. He traveled. Eight turnovers apiece at the 405 mark, and it's a tie ball game. Yep. Entertaining. <laughs> Not always the best played, I've but worked, it's entertaining. I've worked up a sweat already. Four minutes remaining here in the first half. We'll break down this first half of action. Coming up on our halftime show. Pass down on the block to Downen. His pass up top to Connor Hawk, Caden Hawkins. Nice pass to Preston Sumner on the block. He's able to bank it home. He loves that little bank shot. Well, he used his strength to get inside and get that to go off the glass. Two-point lead for the Lions. 15-13, three and a half remaining. Dasani Edwards going to launch from three. That's off the iron. Big rebound for Preston Sumner. Carterville can extend this lead. Pass ahead to Pearson. He gets fouled by Ducoin's uh, Tracyon Smith. And he's going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating in downtown Carterville for over 30 years. They can handle any heating or cooling uh, system issue you may be experiencing. And no job is too big or small. Call Charlie's at 985-2502. The foul called on Trajan Smith is first. Carson Pearson at the line shooting free throws, looking for his first point, gets it. Yeah, Carterville's only two of six from the free throw line, so that's going to have to change going forward. Carson wearing number 23 tonight, his second free throw. 
He gets the touch. Two for Pearson. And it's a four-point ball game for the Lions. Dasani Edwards so fast. Gets the ball into the front court. Swing pass to the left side to Caden Mays. He reverses, loses the handle. Another turnover on the Indians. Here come the Lions. Nice pass to Bryce Anderson. Left-hand layup is good. Bryce has four. Carterville's extended the lead to six. And Coach Jason James needs a timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Lions lead at 19-13 on News Radio WJPL. Is our signal good tonight, Brian? Is our signal okay tonight? Outstanding. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the city of Carterville. Mayor Brad Robinson and the entire city of Carterville. Great sponsors of uh, Duquoin, oh, excuse me, Carterville Lions Sports. Hey, don't forget about their app that you can download. You can sign up for Nixle text alerts, important information, upcoming events. Um, head to Google Play or the Apple App Store and download the app for the city of Carterville. Duquoin basketball, length of the floor to go. They trail by six, just under three minutes remaining here in the first half. Carterville starting to turn some of those Duquoin turnovers into points. Oh, nice pass down to the block. It was a wide open shot, but it was passed up by Ducoin. They get it back to Purcell. He's in the paint, puts a dribble, reverse. They walk. They're going to walk, and Shane Hawkins. <laughs> and we've got they a got technical, technical foul being called, I believe, on Purcell. It is. And the Ducoin fans to our left are not happy. That's 10 turnovers, and you have the technical on Purcell as he said something as he was walking up the floor. And that's going to be his second foul. He comes to the DuCoin bench. Coach Jason James takes him out. Well, you knew that this might happen at some point. The, 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 the hard play is what I'll call it early in this game really kind of led to this. Carson Pearson at the line. He's by himself. He's shooting the technical, and he misses the first. Plus, DuCoin has the ball. Excuse me. Carterville has the ball. Love the intensity from both teams, though. Yeah. Second free throw from Pearson. Rims out. Can't convert on the technical. Carterville with, still with the six-point lead. Sonny Edward talking to one of the officials. They're still. That was a great opportunity for maybe a four-point or even five-point play. Swing, yep. So the ball belongs to the Lions down and on the far sideline will trigger and he gets it to Bryce Anderson Dasani Edward on him defensively man-to-man -man defense by DuCoin they pretty much stayed man-to-man -man all night long Sumner as Bryce Anderson gets pushed from Dasani Edward that's going to be number two on Edward well Cardinal is only two for nine from the line they've got to start hitting these free throws to extend this lead. And it, this season, they've been a decent free throw yeah. shooting team. They shot well against Frankfurt. Bryce Anderson is at the line. Bryce has four points in the first half. His free throw rims out again. Carterville should be up probably eight to ten points if they hit the free throws. Well, they're, they're shooting 30% from the field. Or, excuse me, from the line. The 5'8 junior, Bryce Anderson, his second free throw is good he's got five it's a seven point Lions lead quickly to Caden Mace he stands on the right wing gets it to Edward between the circles left side it goes to Jacob Green now to the right side back to Edward now back to the right wing top of the circle left wing to the left corner they work the perimeter 2-10 on the clock Jacob Green his pass to the right wing Caden May, step back, drives the baseline, puts his shoulder down, traveled with the ball. Another turnover on the Indians. Well, the little guy got inside with the big guys, and he had nowhere to go with the ball, and he walked. Pulled that back foot. 
20 to 13, Carterville leads by seven. Bryce Anderson hands it to Caden Hawkins, now to Eli Downing. He has Jacob Green on him. Back to Anderson, right wing. From just inside the arc, puts the shot up, no good. Oh, he's Preston Sumner winds up on the back of Trajan Smith. He's okay. Yeah, he got undercut. He gets up and is going to go to the line to shoot free throws. Carterville's in the double bonus now. That's the 10th team foul. That's going to be foul number... They call that on Edward? Yes. Okay. I already had him for two, but Preston Sumner's at the line. He's got two points in the game. His first free throw was good. This Lions broadcast brought to you by American Monument Company, located on the South Court Street in Marion, where their monuments have that special touch. 21 to 13. Preston Sumner looking for point number four. He's at the line. Free throw is on the way, and it's no good, and a lane violation. It's going to be a foul on Dasani Edward, and he throws his hands up in disbelief, and he comes to the official again. That's foul number three on Dasani Edward. Well, here's the thing. I called this, um, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought about the NBA player who was always in trouble. Um, yeah, he played yeah. with the uh, Bulls, the big rebounder. Uh, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. That's what I call the Dennis Rodman rule. Dennis Rodman was the type of player that officials watched him because of all the things he did away from the ball. And I think Edwards, because of what's happened in this game early, the officials are watching him a little closer. Been chirpy since about the uh, seven-minute mark of the first quarter is the first free throw from Preston Sumner. Well, Carterville's just dreadful at the free throw line tonight. 12%, 15%, I bet. Is it that bad? 4 of 12, 33%. <laughs> I did that in my head. Did you notice that? That's still bad. I didn't have to do that. I know. I didn't have to get the calculator or use my toes. 21 to 13, minute 45, Sumner's second free throw. It's good. Sumner's got four in the game. He's going to check out. Austin Garby's going to check back in. So on the lot floor for the Lions, it's Garby, Anderson, Downen, Pearson, and uh, Little Hawkins, number 21, Caden Hawkins. Minute 35, 22 to 13, a nine-point lead. Nice pass down low to the big guy. He gets hammered from behind. Bryce Anderson keeps Maurice Washington. That's a matchup you want right there. 6-7, Maurice Washington going to the rack. And Bryce Anderson comes in and gets a good foul. Yeah, it's a very good foul. You're going to make sure the sophomore's not going to score an easy basket. Make him earn at the free throw line. We'll see how he is, the 6'7 uh, sophomore. Where's number 55? He's at the line shooting two, a minute 33 on the clock. His first free throw rims out. That's why good. you do it. Good foul. That's their, they've only shot three free throws tonight. And that's only the 10th, 5th team foul on the Lions. Carterville steps in. They set their call defensively. Maurice Washington, his second free throw for the Indians. No good. Carson Pearson pulls down the board. Gets it to Caden Hawkins. Under 90 seconds remaining. 22 to 13. Caden Hawkins, left wing it goes to Carson Pearson. He has Trajan Smith on him. He dribbles around top of the key to the free throw line. Stops, fakes, his shot rims in and out. Bryce Anderson pulls down the board, gets it to down, and now wide open three from Caden Hawkins. Good! And a foul! Big shot from the freshman. A it push gives. foul on... Maurice Washington, Caden Hawkins buries the three-pointer from the left corner. They give Pearson credit and assist for keeping that missed shot alive to allow Hawkins, the freshman, to hit the three. And Austin Garby's going to the line and is going to shoot two free throws because the foul was away from the shot. Yep. 65 seconds. Carterville's pushed the lead to 12. It's 25 to 13. 
And Garvey's first free throw. Boy, boy, rims boy, out. Boy, boy. Look at Shane Hawkins throws his hands in the air. What is going on, fellas? Follow through. Carnival could have a 20-point lead in this game if they just hit half their free throws. Second one from Garmy. He hits that one. He's got four. 26-13, a 13-point lead. Caden Mays across midcourt. To the right side, now brings it back to the left. That is Jaden Smith, his pass. They get it down to the big guy on the block. Puts an elbow, no call. Misses the layup. And Carterville pulls down the board. Man, that was a obvious elbow into the chest of the Carterville defender. No call. 40 seconds remaining, 26 to 13. Little floater from Caden Hawkins, rims in and out, no good. Down and battles for the board. It's on the floor. Ducoin comes away. Spin move by Caden Mays. Takes it to the rack. Puts it up. Shot's no good. I think the foul might be on the floor before the shot. <laughs> After every stoppage in play, players are going to the officials saying, I had my arms straight yeah. up. I did nothing. So at the line for Ducoin, it's going to be Jaden Smith. The foul is called on Bryce Anderson, his second. That's the 16 foul. And it's Indians basketball on the baseline. Pass comes to Washington. They get it over to the right side. 26 to 13. Carterville, the 13 point lead. Jaden Mays, little. Floater down the lane, and he's fouled. And Austin Garvey says, I didn't do anything. But that's who they're going to call the yeah, foul on. The official on the wing made that call. But this, since Carterville's gone to his own, Ducoin's really had problems figuring it out. Great call defensively for the Lions. So now, Caden Mays, the 5'6 senior, is at the line. That's the 17 foul, so he's in the bonus. First free throw is good. Caden Mays has five points for DuCoin. And it's a 12-point game. Lions lead it. 19.4 seconds remaining. Connor Hawkins is going to check in after the made free throw. He's going to replace Austin Garby, Carson Pearson on the floor, Eli Downen, Bryce Anderson, Caden Hawkins. All can launch from three. 26-15. 11-point lead. Downen with the ball. 15 seconds on the clock across midcourt. Top of the circle. Left side it goes to Pearson. Pearson back to Downen. 9, 8, 7 on the clock. Bryce Anderson gets the screen from Downen. Leaves it. Oh, and the pass. He was anticipating Carson Pearson driving the baseline. Carson Pearson backed up to the corner. The ball goes out of bounds. Turnover on the Lions. Good idea, just two, two players on different on a different page. Connor Hawkins, or excuse me, Shane Hawkins grabs Townsend Martin by the arm and drags him up to try to get him in in time for the defensive substitution with 3.6 seconds, 26-15. Indians basketball. Caden Mays launches at the buzzer. No good. 26-15. Man, what a ball game. The Lions lead it as we go to half. And here on our halftime show this evening, it's brought to you by Subway. Our Subway halftime show is next on News Radio WJPL. Do what you need to. Hi. Right. If you're watching online, sorry a little bit earlier it locked up on us and had to reset. Hope all was well. Good ball game. Good.
We're at the half. It's Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson in Carterville. Has the lead 26 to 15. At the end of the first quarter, it was tied at six. Carterville explodes for 20 points in that second quarter. They really got hot uh, from, as far as field goals, not so much from the free throw line. No, free throw line, Carterville's only six of 15 for 40%. And if Ducoin ends up getting back in this game, you hope that that poor free throw shooting in, in the first half doesn't cost the Lions. Ducoin only went to the free throw line six times, but they made four. Carterville, 47% from the field in the first half, only 26% for the Ducoin Indians. Rebounding, Carterville out-rebounded the Indians 14 to six. Carterville was led in rebounding by Anderson with four. Purcell led Ducoin with three turnovers. Ducoin 11, Carterville 9. When you look at scoring, uh, let's look first at the Ducoin Indians. They are led in the first half by Caden Mays. The 5'6 senior has six points to lead the Indians. You have uh, Dasani Edwards. He's got five. He had one three-pointer in that first half. Braden Purcell, the big 6'4 senior, only has two points. Plus, he got the technical um, there in the first half. And Wade Roberson has two points. 26 to 15 the score here at the half in a chippy, chirpy, physical, sloppy, <laughs> no free throw hitting Carterville Lion team. And if they hit just five more free throws, they, they have a, a 20 point lead in this game. Yeah, even if they just hit 50%, you know, they, they've got a big lead in this game. But you know, Carnival leads by 11 and a half. Carnival had a very good second quarter. They shot almost 50% from the field. Uh, they turned a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, those new coin turnovers into points. Uh, but they've just got to, you know, they, they've just got to keep their heads about them. They cannot get caught up in all the emotion, all the chip, chippy play that, that started in that first quarter. I think if Carnival can keep their heads, I think they can, uh, you know, come away with a win in this game. It's been a good game so far. 26 to 15. We're going to go on and take a break. When we return, Scott and I will continue to talk about the first half play. The Lions lead the Indians 26 to 15 here with Lions basketball on News Radio WJPF. Back at Carterville High School. Happy Friday, everybody. Dave McKenzie and Scott Hudson. 26 to 15, the score here at the half. Scott, coming up tomorrow, you and I are going to make a trip south. We're going to head to McCracken County High School in Paducah as the Lions prepare to take on Callaway County in the o Oregon Donor Shootout at Paducah High School. Yeah, it'll be Carterville's first uh, road game of the year. It'll be the, my first time being at McCracken County High School. I worked with a gentleman who was there last year so it's a very nice facility. So looking forward to going down there and, and not only seeing another team that Carterville will not play the rest of the year, which is why you get in these shootouts, first of all. But we'll all, all, I'm also interested in seeing how Carterville will play on the road for the first time this year. Absolutely. They've played at home. Let's see how they play on the road. Five games, and they've all been right here 
at Carterville High School. Um, I've, I've been to McCracken County High School. I saw Tim Tebow speak there. Is that right? There a few years ago. It was. It's huge. It is a huge. It's probably twice the size of what we're setting in right now at Carterville, and the place was sold out when I saw Tebow there. Um, and it was just a great event. A great. A great school. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this game coming up tomorrow. Now, keep in mind, it's an early start. It's a 4.30 start. We'll have our pregame show approximately 4.15, depending on how the early games go. Um, and just follow us on social media. We'll also try to have the stream. Um, I'm, I'm prepared to have the stream up tomorrow afternoon as well. But Scott and I will have the tip-off somewhere around 4.30 as the Carterville Lions take on Callaway County Lakers at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Let's hope LeBron doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Maybe Kobe? I'd like to see Kobe come back and play. But, uh, maybe uh, Shaq. You know, <laughs> Shaq's probably not in great shape right now. 26-15, tw to 15, the score here. That was, I told you, in the pregame show. Historically, this matchup between these two teams is a physical matchup. Probably the most physical game the Lions play all year. And it just seen, it goes that way and they did not disappoint in the first half. No, not at all. And, and the good thing is it did not get out of hand. I mean, there was a couple of cut times where it could have. But cooler heads prevail. I thought the officials did a good job to get control of it. But there's still a half a basketball to play. That doesn't mean that it won't rear its ugly head again. But the Cardinals got the 11 point lead. They played well in the second quarter. They've just got to stick to the game. Cut down on the turnovers in the second half and just go, go right at the Indians. In the matchup against West Frankfurt last Saturday night, they did great in the third quarter. They came out hot. They pushed the lead to 28. And then as the fourth quarter went on and some of the, under, uh, the, the uh, underclassmen got in, it wound up being uh, not a 28-point win, but a, a double-digit win nonetheless. We're going to go on and take our final break. This is our Subway halftime show. Second half action is coming up. Carterville leads this game 26 to 15 over the Duquoin Indians. This is Lions basketball on News Radio WJPL. Ready for second half action here at Carterville High School. He is Scott Hudson. I'm Dave McKenzie. 26 to 15, Carterville has the 11 point lead. We have one score to report. Early in the fourth, another low scoring game. Benton leads here in 33 to 27. Two teams are going to gather around their Head coaches, Coach Jason James of the DuPont Indians, Coach Shane Hawkins and his crew for the Carterville Lions. Carterville looking to pick up win number two of the season. They come in two tonight with a one and four record, of course, dropping all four games in the Pyramid Plus tournament that was held here at Carterville High School. Good games, good experience for the Lions. Yep. And I asked Coach Shane Hawkins before the game, in the pregame show, 
did those that tournament help set up his team to play the first conference game tonight? And he said, absolutely. Anytime you can play a team like Collinsville, Mount Vernon, Marion, or Heron, all bigger schools, as long as you play hard, you learn a lot, you gain a lot from playing those those uh, bigger schools. For Carterville, good, the good thing going into the second half, they don't really have anybody in foul trouble. Absolutely, and don't forget that Mount Vernon squad beat Carterville on free throws with three seconds left in a one-point win. It's 26-15. We're underway here in the third. Nice pass down low to Preston Sumner to start things off. He has six points in the game, and it's 28-15 Lions. Great pass from down and to the, to the cutting Sumner. Duquinas moving uh, from left to right on your radio dial. Skip pass to the left wing. As it is Brian Winters gets it down on the baseline. The shot is no good taken by Trajan Smith. Carterville has the basketball. Carson Pearson to Nick Laird. Now to down and he's going to launch from three off the iron. No good and the rebound to Caden Mays for the Indians. Outlet pass ahead. Nice left hand layup and a foul as it is Wade Roberson that scores. He gets out behind the defense, and he got fouled. And they're going to call the foul on... It's on down, and I believe it is. And that's number two, a number two four for the Lions. Wade Roberson had two points in the first half. The 6-1 junior at the line, trying to convert the end one. Free throw is uh, no good, and Sumner gets the board. This Lions broadcast brought to you by SIH, creating a healthy Southern Illinois, made stronger by acts of caring. Three ball from Pearson's no good. Laird goes over the back to get the rebound, but it comes off to the Indians. Here comes Caden Mays to the low block, and they're going to call down and on a block, and he, he hadn't got set as Caden Mays kind of put the shoulder into him, but down and just picked up foul number three. Now I just mentioned that Carnival had nobody in foul trouble at half and here down and picks up two in about 30 seconds. He's now got three, so you got to be careful with him. Caden Mays, the leading scorer for the Indians in the first half, misses his first free throw. Now they've missed, they hit their first four free throws, now they've missed their next four. Mays is a 5'6 senior. Coach Jason James, second free throw. It's good. Seven points now for Mays. And it's a 10-point game. Lions on top, 28-18. Bryce Anderson has Mays on him defensively. Now it gets the ball to Sumner. Now to down and Nice backdoor pass to Nick Laird. He gets fouled from behind. As it was Trajan Smith that got into him. Smith picks up his second foul. What a pass to get to Nick Laird. Yeah, Down has made two great passes here early in the third. One to a cutting Sumner there to a cutting Laird. Laird has two points in the game. He's at the line. Trying to extend this 10-point lead. Now it's an 11-point lead. Smith checks out. And it's going to be Jaden Smith. Trajan checks out. Jaden checks in. Nick Laird. The 5'11 senior, his second free throw is good. He has four. 30 to 18, Carterville on top. They get the ball into Purcell. Little 10 foot jumpers, too strong. Preston Sumner with the board. Hands it off to Eli Downing. Defense sets back. They pick him up man to man to Bryce Anderson. Kick out pass to Pearson. Now to Downing. To the baseline, stutter yeah. step, travel. First turnover here in the second half. Carterville, and after having like six turnovers in the first quarter, they only wound up with nine in the first half, and that's the first here in the second. Yeah, Eli still trying to do a little bit too much when he gets the ball. You have a 12-point lead. Let the game come to you. Don't try to force anything. Indians have the ball. Brian Winters will... Get, hand the ball off to Caden Mays. Mays gets it to Purcell. And now he goes left wing to Smith. And a travel and a turnover on Wade Roberson. First turnover on the Indians here in the half. Austin Garvey and his shoes will check in for the Lions. 
Well, I tell you what, if the lights ever go out in this place, I know where I'm going. I'm following Mr. Garby out. When my cataracts kick in, I'll be able to see him play. <laughs> Bryce Anderson dribbles around in the backcourt, across midcourt to Garby in the shoes. Now to Preston Sumner, right side to Nick Laird. Laird takes it, kick out pass to Pearson, head fake from Pearson, top of the circle to Anderson. Anderson hasn't dribbled, now does. Right side to Laird. Laird takes it to the baseline. Pulls up the dribble, needs help. Gets it to Garby. Garby back to Laird. Right side, 30 to 18, 535 on the clock. Laird, wide open shot from the left wing from Anderson. Air ball. Nice job by Sumner to save it. It goes out of bounds, and the officials look at each other, and they're going to say it belongs to the Indians. Yeah, both teams are combined two for seven from the field to start this third quarter. Nashville beat Anna Jonesboro tonight, 49 to 28. Next week, Carterville will be at Anna Jonesboro on Friday. No, yeah, at Anna Jonesboro. Oh, nice drive from Caden Mays as he got bumped from, I think they're gonna call it on Sumner. Mays was out of control when he went in the lane. It's easy for us to say this sitting up here, but if I'm Sumner, I just let him go because chances are he's probably not going to be able to convert. And he didn't, but he got fouled and is at the line shooting two, and he hits the first. Caden Mays has eight points. That's foul number one, though, on Preston Sumner. As physical as this game is, that's good news right yeah. there. Mays, his second free throw rims out. Sumner pulls down the board. And he's going to take the ball across the timeline for the first time this year. Needs some help. Gets it from Anderson. Anderson dribbles around. Gets it to Pearson. He launches from three. Way too strong, but look, Preston Sumner's right there. Gets it to Laird. Back to Sumner, but that ball was tipped away. It's on the floor. Keep battling, and a jump ball, and it's going to belong to the Indians. Yeah, good hustle. Boy, Sumner with a great play to keep to get that offensive rebound. He, he went from one side of the floor to the other to get that rebound, but Carnival's shooting walls continue here in the third. He has really played an outstanding game tonight, especially with all the physicality. I hate that word, yep. but that's <laughs> that, that we've seen here tonight. He's remained in control, played a strong game. He's got six points in the game. And a whistle and a foul on the Lions. You know, Nick Laird just picked up his first foul. a forearm to the ball, to the uh, Ducoin Indian player. That's the first on Laird, the fourth team foul. Ducoin only has one team foul here in the half. Top of the circle. Nobody guards Dasani Edward. He just launches and misses. Sumner gets the board. And it's Carterville ball. 30 to 19. Nick Laird, nice pass down low to Garby. He banks it off the bottom of the rim, gets his own board, puts it up, misses, gets his own rebound, misses again. Carson Pearson saves it. It's on the floor, and a tripping foul is going to be called on Austin Garby. Yeah, Garby just could not convert. Three opportunities, though. Carterville, three, six, one of... Eight from the field to start this third quarter. About like they were in the first first half. Yep. Got things going in the second. They scored 20 second quarter points. Ah, terrible pass from Ducoin's Brian Winters. He was looking for somebody to cut, and they weren't there. The ball winds up right to Sumner. Carterville has it in the front court. Down low. Ball's tipped away. Turnover. And and I was going to say it's knocked out of bounds by Ducoin. Yeah, so it's going to stay with the Lions. This Lions broadcast... It's brought to you by Tony Gates State Farm. Bundle your home and auto insurance. Visit Tony Gates, your local neighborhood State Farm agent. The pass. <laughs> Bonnie missed from Laird. Garby gets the rebound, and he gets fouled. And he's going to go shoot a couple of free throws. That ball hung on the rim forever. Boy, you got to make those. you got to make those. Fortunately for Carterville, Duke Coins only hit one field goal in this third quarter as well. Dasani Edward just picked up his fourth foul. 
Senior has his hands on his hips as he comes over in front of the bench. Garby's first free throw is no good. Garby, normally a very reliable free throw shooter. Tonight, I think he's only hit one. No, he's got three. I'm sorry. Two. He's got two free throws. Ooh, gets this one to fall. Carterville is three of four in this third quarter from the free throw line. 31-19, Carterville on top. As uh, Nick Laird trips Caden Mays as he was driving to the hole. Laird just picked up foul number two. Team foul number six. And the 5'6 senior, Caden Mays, will go to the line and shoot the free throws. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's made six at the line tonight. His first one rims out, no good. This line's broadcast is brought to you by Homer News, serving all of Southern Illinois. You can protect what matters most. Roofing, siding, storm damage, repair, gutters. Be giving you peace of mind, call 694, rather, 9100. Call home renew as Caden Mays hits both free throws. They throw the ball away. Turnover on the lines. It's turnover number three. It's an 11 point game. Wide open three from the right corners off the iron. No good. Carterville gets the rebound. That's Anderson. Carterville caught a break there. 11 point lead, 31 to 20, 325 remaining in the third quarter. Garby, he drives it into the paint. He gets fouled, goes head first on the floor on his belly into the student section of Carterville on the far side. Garby's very good at drawing contact. Some big guys don't have that mentality, but Garby's very good about getting somebody to come over and swat him. So we can get to the free throw line. Wade Roberson just picked up his third foul. It's the third team foul on Ducoin. Coach Shane Hawkins has a towel on the baseline. Trying to mop up the floor. And takes a seat at the end of the bench. At the line is Garby. His first free throw is good. This Lions broadcast is also brought to you by the city of Carterville. Don't forget to download the city's app that you can find at the Google Play or the Apple App Store. You can get Nixle alerts for important information and upcoming events. Second free throw from Garby is no good. The ball goes out of bounds and it's going to stay with the Lions. Yeah, Ducoin's really struggling on both ends of the floor. Right now, Cardville's got a chance to blow this thing open here late in the third. They lead it by 12, 32 to 20. Cardville basketball. Garvey to Caden Hawkins, who just checked into the game. We have a whistle to foul, and it's going to be on Austin Garvey. That's going to be a turnover on the Lions, and that's foul number four on Garvey. Probably a little bit too aggressive with his shoulders and or elbow, trying to get position on the inside. You know what, though? With shoulders and arms like that, I'd be yeah, aggressive, too. That's right. I used to look like that. I never did. One time. It was well, Halloween. Well, I did, too, but I think it was in one of those uh, <laughs> houses with the mirrors. <laughs> Is that the amusement park? Yeah, there you go. Three minutes remaining, 32-20, Lions on top. Indians have the ball. Ball goes out of bounds off of Caden Mays. And no. They're saying actually it went off Bryce Anderson. The backside official steps in. So Indians have it. Winners is going to trigger from the baseline. Needs to hurry. Needs to hurry. Gets it to Purcell. His shot off the glass. Nice paint shot from the 6'4 senior. He's got four in the game. Carterville has the ball down low. Purcell slaps the shot from Carson Pearson. Here comes the ball the other way. A whistle and a foul on the Lions, and it's going to be on Pearson, who fouled from behind. Yeah, good job by Carterville after the basket to get the ball up the floor quickly, but once Pearson got the ball down the baseline, you got to pull that out because you're going up against the big boys, and he got his shot blocked. 
Ducoin just hanging around right now. They called the foul on Preston Sumner, not on Carson Pearson. It's going to be Brian Winters that's at the line. Winters has yet to score the 5'11 junior. He's going to be shooting a one and one That's the eighth team foul now on the Lions. Sumner gets the missed free throw. Carterville has it. Two and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Caden Hawkins schools Winters defensively. Gets it to Pearson. He takes it to the hole and is fouled. And a foul away from the bucket. You know, this game's turning into a foul fest. Jaden Smith just picked up his first foul. It's a 10-point game, 32-22. It was tied 6-6 at the end of one. 26-15, Lions on top at the half. 32-22 at the two-and-a-half minute mark. Nice inbound pass to Down, and he can't convert. The pass comes to Pearson. He loses, or excuse me, to Caden Hawkins. They get the ball down low. Sumner off the glass. Oh, too strong. And the rebound comes to Bryce Anderson. Another opportunity, and his pass down low is intercepted by Ducoin. Two minutes. 32-22. Winners. Left wing. Down to Purcell on the block. Makes a move up and under off the glass. That's good. Nice move from Braden Purcell. Yeah, Sumner is so strong. You cannot let Purcell go baseline. you got to put your foot on that end line and make him run over you. Ducoin slowly has crept right back into this ball game. They trail by eight points here at the 140 mark. A whistle and a foul is going to put Nick Laird at the line. The foul is on a Braden Purcell. That's foul number three. Don't forget, he picked up a technical in the first quarter. But he's played pretty good since that point. Laird at the line. He's got four, and now he has five. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating. Beautiful downtown Carterville. Call 985-2502 and get back to comfort this season. Proudly supporting Lions Sports. Laird hits his second. He's got four points here in the second half, all at the stripe. Six of eight for the Lions in the second half of the line. Ten-point lead, 34-24, with a minute 40 remaining here in the third quarter. Scott and I will name our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game coming up in our post-game show. Joe to our right, good evening. I said that with emphasis so he could hear me. <laughs> oh, Caden Mays drives the line, runs over the top of Connor Hawkins, and Connor Hawkins is going to be called for the foul. Foul number three on Middle Hawk. The Carnival's got to stop fouling because Ducoin is already in the uh, bonus, and one more foul Carnival will be in the double bonus. We're not even in the fourth quarter yet. Caden Mays. He leads all scores. He's got nine, and he misses the first free throw. Minute 25 remaining. Carterville ball. Left wing, Connor Hawkins is going to launch from three. That's short. <laughs> what a board from Preston <laughs> Sumner. He puts the shot up. He gets fouled, and he's going to go to the line. As they call the foul on the Indians. And that's going to be on Brian Winters, foul number three. Team foul number six, Preston Sumner, who has six in the game. And the 6'1 junior gets two free throws. First one from Sumner is no good. Carterville has one field goal this third quarter. Yet they still lead by 10. They've scored eight points at the line. Or six of those eight points have come from the stripe. Braden Purcell checks out. Into the game for Ducoyna's Kelvin Edward. That may be his first action of the night. Sumner, his second free throw, is good. Seven now for Sumner, and it's back to an 11-point lead. Duquoin had gotten to within E8 just moments ago. The pass intended for Kelvin Edward is tipped away. Turnover on the Indians in Carterville basketball. 
Now Duquoin picks up the defensive pressure. Bryce Anderson dribble, dribble. <laughs> Bryce Anderson dribbles through, drives the lane, gets the bucket and the foul. <laughs> well, he does, he dribbled through three Duquoin defenders near the center line. And then he went down the lane expecting somebody to come to him to stop him, and nobody did. He said, okay, I'll go ahead and take it, and he got fouled. Kelvin Edward just picked up his first foul. Anderson hits the free throw. He has eight in the game, and it's a 14-point lead under a minute to go. I was trying to say way too much there too fast. Right wing, Caden Mays. They were reversing around to Winters, left wing, top of the circle. Now back to Caden Mays to the baseline, Winners. They work the perimeter. Are they trying to hold for the final shot? Head fake from Mays from the right wing. His pass up top to Jaden Smith. Now left wing to Brian Winters. Skip to Caden Mays. 28 on the clock. Mays drives, puts it up off the glass. No good. Price or Preston Sumner. Big board. I don't know how many rebounds he has tonight, but he's had a heck of a game on the glass. Bryce Anderson dribbles through the defenders again. Takes it to the rack. Left right hand layups. No good. Connor Hawkins gets the board. Short jumpers, no good. Bryce Anderson gets the board. Now to Laird. Down low to Sumner. Off the glass, and he gets fouled. Well, they traveled. Turnover on the lines. One score to report. Heron hits a shot with seven seconds left to beat Benton 39-38 at Benton tonight. Wow, what a game. We're going to go to Benton and play this year. Yes, we are. At the shot at the buzzer is no good. 38-24. Carterville leads by 14. And we are going to head to the fourth and final quarter. What a game. The first River to River Conference game for both teams. This is Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. Thirty-eight to twenty-four as we start play here in the fourth quarter. Carterville lead uh, the Decoin Indians by fourteen. Carterville basketball in the front court on the floor for the Lions. It's Connor Hawkins, Bryce Anderson, Eli Down, or excuse me, Nick Laird, Townsend Barton seeing his first play here in the second half, and now it's going to be Eli Downing that checks in. Carson Pearson checks in. Townsend Barton checks out. Connor Hawkins checks out. 14-point lead for the Lions. Yeah, the Carterville has seven turnovers here in the second half. Only three for Ducoin, but Ducoin's poor shooting has really uh, kept uh, has, has kept Carterville ahead of this game. Entertaining ball game here all night long. Lion, excuse me, Indians have it. They're in the Road Reds here this evening. Dasani Edward. Playing here in the fourth quarter. He's got four fouls. Nice pass and nice move by Purcell in the paint. He misses the shot. Edward gets the rebound and gets it to Caden Mays. Mays reverses back to Edward. Top of the circle to Brian Winters. Back to Dasani Edwards. Short jumper from just inside the arc from Wade Robertson. He's got six, and it's a 12-point lead for the Lions. Bryce Anderson gets fouled in the backcourt. Who are they going to call it on? They're going to call on the winners, I believe. It is. And that's going to be four on Brian Winters. Dasani Edward has, 
Dasani Edward has four. Preston Sumner checks in. He replaces Nicholas Laird. Bryce Anderson is going to be at the line. He has eight points. This could put him in double figures if he can hit both. He hits the first. Once again, Scott and I will name our Joe's Lawn Karen Snow Removal Star of the Game coming up in our post-game show. We'll talk to Coach Shane Hawkins. Break down this first conference game of 2019 as Anderson misses the second free throw. Nine in the game for Anderson. 39-26, a 13-point Lions lead. Top of the circle, Dasani Edward. They get it to Purcell. Just off the lane, now back to Caden Mays. Nice pass down into the paint off the block for Purcell. That was a nice feed, and Purcell converts. An 11-point lead now for the Lions. Carterville breaks the press. Right side to Caden Hawkins. To Pearson, or excuse me, to Bryce Anderson. Tries to bank it from the left side. No good. Here come the Indians. A chance to cut it to single digits. From the left elbow, shot's no good. Taken by Wade Robertson and Carterville. Gets the board. They get it to Downen. Two on Downen. He gets it to Anderson. He gets fouled by Caden Mays, and he just picked up foul number two. <laughs> we might be here till midnight with this foul fest I'm going on. I'm telling you, it's still 6.05 remaining here in the fourth. And if it's the case, the way things have gone tonight, I like new coins chances because they've hit free throws. Carterville, especially that first half, was woeful. Woeful. <laughs> exactly. And Bryce Anderson's woeful on that one. He can't convert the front end of the one and one. Both teams have nine team fouls. Oh, what a floater from Brian Winters down the lane. His first bucket of the game comes at the 550 mark, and it's a nine point Lions lead. The ball's kicked out of bounds by Wade Robert Roberson. Carterville still only has two field goals in this half. They led at the end of three, 38 24. Carterville gets through the double team. Eli down and takes control. Surprised they didn't call a travel as he drug a foot. Carson Pearson. Now to Downen. Over to Bryce Anderson. Carterville's going to try to eat up as much clock as they can on these possessions. Caden Hawkins has it. Right wing has to Sonny Edward on him. Now to Downen between the circles. To Hawkins. Now to Anderson. Skip pass left wing to Pearson. To Downen. Ball rip. Dribbles left hand. Pass to Preston Sumner. Back door. What a pass. What a bucket. Sumner has nine and a timeout is taken on the floor. 5.02 remaining. 41-30. Lions lead it by 11. We'll be back in 30 on News Radio WJPF. Back at Carterville, DuCoin just turned the ball over. Carterville takes it to the other way, and Carson Pearson makes the bucket and gets fouled, and a chance to make it a three-point play here at the 445 mark. What a pass from Bryce Sanderson. Deep in the backcourt, just throws a bullet to Pearson, who goes up for the basket, gets fouled, and misses the free throw. Caden Mays picked up his foul. Pearson misses the free throw. It's a 13-point lead for the Lions, and the ball's kicked by Carson Pearson. It's going to stay with the Indians. 
43 to 30. Lions on top. Sumner checks out. Garby checks in for Coach Shane Hawkins. We'll Carterville has shot, Dave, 30 free throws in this game so far. <laughs> I'll give you the percentages here in a minute. But I don't want the percentage. <laughs> it's not good as the three ball is no good from the left corner. Whistle from the backside official, and it's going to be on Austin Garby, who just came into the game, and Austin Garby is going to go out of the game. That's foul number five. Shane Hawkins is going to take his time with the replacement. We'll talk to the head coach of the Lions. Coming up on our post-game show, Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal Star of the Game will be named by Mr. Hudson. Shane talking to the official. Walks back and forth across his bench. I'll take you. And that's going to be Nick Laird that's going to come in to replace Austin Garvey. Austin finishes the game with six points tonight. Not a lot of minutes, not as many as he had against West Frankfurt. At the line is Braden Purcell. His free throw is good. He's got nine points in the game, seven here in the second half. And it's a 12-point lead for the Lions, the second from the 6'4 senior. It's good. Cuts that lead to 11. He has 10 in the game. And Duquan picks up the full-court pressure. Carterville throws the ball away. And a timeout taken by Shane Hawkins. Good call by the coach. We're going to take a break as well. 43-32. Lions lead it by 11 here on News Radio WJPF. Go 60. This is going to come down to the wire, I'm telling you. Probably. Back here, the Lions lead at 43 to 32. Dasani Edward for the endings just picked up his fifth foul. <laughs> Duke Wayne fans thought he tripped and fell on his own. The officials saw it the other way. And Carterville will go to the free throw line yet again. Dasani Edward ends the game with five points tonight. He had one field goal and a three pointer. And it's going to be Caden Hawkins at the line. He's got three in the game, and his first free throw is good. The 5'8 freshman at the line puts the Lions up a dozen at the 432 mark here in the first conference game. Mississippi Division. Little Hawks free throw was good. He's got five. Indians basketball. They trail by 13. Baker's dozen. Short jumper from. Wade Robertson's no good. They'll call a charge. Charge on Robertson, and he's picked up foul number four. Brian Winters has four. Caden Mays playing with three fouls for the Indians. 45-32. Don't forget the Lions will be playing in Kentucky tomorrow. McCracken County High School, the Oregon donor shootout. What a pass to Caden Mays! As he cuts back door and he converts, excuse me, Caden Hawkins. He's got seven and lead to 15 now for the Lions. <laughs> I hate that hop jump like that yeah. as the pass in the paint converts from Brayden Purcell. He's got a dozen. Back to 13 point lead for the Lions. Carterville needs a run clock. Yep. You got enough points to win. Eli Downing. 
His pass over to the right side to Bryce Anderson. Anderson with a left-hand dribble up top to Connor Hawkins. Connor gets fouled. He's fouled by Braden Purcell. And Purcell just picked up his fourth foul. And there's still three and a half minutes left. <laughs> oh. Yeah, tomorrow the Lions will have a 4.30 contest. It's the Oregon Donor Shootout at McCracken County High School. The Lions are going to play Callaway County, Kentucky. We should be on the air with our pregame show around 4.15. Connor Hawkins has one point. He has two points. Eight Carnival Lions in the scorebook tonight. Contributing. 12-footers no good from the Indians. It goes, it's saved to Brian Winters. Nice job by Wade Roberson. Winters loses control, gets it to Purcell, but he's able to hit the little short jumper. 14 for the senior to lead all scores in the game tonight. Bryce Anderson, his pass to Connor Hawkins, right hand layup is good. Nice job by the Lions breaking the press by the Indians. Fighting the open man. And he was wide open, spin move by Purcell, banks it off the glass, good. 16 for Purcell. 51-38, Lions 245 remaining. Caden Hawkins. To Bryce Anderson, now to Carson Pearson. Pearson, left-hand dribble between the circles to Caden Hawkins. Runs into the double team, finds Anderson. Anderson over to the corner, back up top. Caden Hawkins passes up a wide open three. Smartly, Connor Hawkins gets fouled out front. And that's going to be on Brian Winters, and he just picked up foul number five. Got the total up all the free throws. Cardinal has shot here in the second half alone. Trajan Smith is at the line. Or excuse me, in, in replacing Brian Winters, Connor Hawkins at the line, misses the first free throw. Cardinal has now shot 20 free throws in the second half to go along with 15 in the first half. Little Hawk is three for four. Excuse me. I'm going to have to get this lined out. That's Middle Hawk. That was Connor Hawkins. Big Hawk, of course, the head coach. Little Hawk is Caden Hawkins. And I think there's another Hawk in there somewhere. I think you're right. I think there's one more. Is and guess Purcell. what? There's another foul called. On the Lions. It's going to be Townsend Barton, who just came into the game. Picked up his first foul. Purcell is at the line. He has 16 points. He only had two at the half. He's got 14 here in the second half. And he misses the first free throw. I think his arms are getting tired. Tired legs right there. Townsend Barton heads back to the bench. Carson Pearson replaces him. On the floor is Connor Hawkins, Eli Downing. Carson Pearson, Caden Hawkins, Bryce Anderson for the Lions. 2.13 remaining. Purcell's free throw's good. Timeout on the floor, 2.13 mark. We'll be back in 60 seconds, 52.39 Lions on News Radio WJPF. Back at Carterville High School, Dave McKenzie and Scott Hudson. Carterville ball, length of the floor to go, 52 to 39. Coming up on our postgame show. It'll be the Ortho Institute postgame show. Caden Hawkins has the ball. Gets it to Bryce Anderson, now to Connor Hawkins. 
Hawk to Downen. Downen, double team. Finds Pearson. Nice pass to Caden Hawkins. Over to Connor Hawkins. Carterville works the perimeter. Well done. Eli Downen takes it into the paint. Floaters good for Downen. Carterville's hit their last five shots from the field. Downen's got eight, 54 39. Minute 35 remaining. Carterville's going to lead the River to River Conference on the Mississippi side after tonight. First conference game for Sell, a foul. We'll go back to the line. The foul is on. Bryce Anderson. Fifty-four thirty-nine. Braden Purcell, his first free throw is good. Fourteen-point lead for the Lions. Coach Shane Hawkins still coaching hard. Talks to his guys on the floor. The six-four senior for Duquoin Purcell hits his second. Nineteen and a timeout is taken by Coach Jason James. We're going to pause 60. It's a full timeout. 54-41, a 13-point lead for the Lions. We'll wrap up this ball game. Coming up next on News Radio WJPF. Fifty-four to forty-one, the Lions on top with under ninety seconds remaining here in the game. Carterville basketball. Carterville breaks the press. Carson Pearson, Bryce Anderson. He has Trajan Smith on him. Trap over in the corner and a whistle of foul. They have stepped out of bounds. Oh yeah. There we go. Eight Turnover. turnovers now for Carterville in the second half. There have been, Mr. McKenzie, 57 free throws attempted in this game as Ducoin turns the ball over. And Carterville turns it over the other way. Here come the Indians. Right-hand layup is good from Caden Mays. He has 11 now. It's an 11-point game under a minute to go. 50 seconds to be exact. Carson Pearson. Nice pass to Connor Hawkins. He could have shot it. Carterville wants to run the clock. Hawk gets it back to Pearson. The ball slapped out of bounds by the Indians. Stops the clock. 41 seconds. You're counting on your toes right now. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't think I've ever done a game where there's been, there's been this many fouls. This many times to go to the free throw line. Put your shoes back on. Yeah, that smell's about to kill me. <laughs> Actually, it's opened up my sinuses. That's, I should keep <laughs> them off. feel better? <laughs> the suspense for tomorrow's game. Will Scott have a voice? <laughs> Carnival's just going to run the clock. 22 seconds remaining. They lead this game by 11, 54, 43. 15 seconds. Bryce Anderson. Down and has his pass... Slapped out of bounds. It was intended for the quarterback. Usually it's the other way around on the yeah. football field. It's down and for Bryce Anderson. Carterville under 10 to go. 54 to 43. No. Ball's tipped away. And Caden Mays scores a bucket. Time running out. 54 to 45. Carterville picks up. The nine-point win and their first conference win 
of the 2019 season. Lions win it. Post game show brought to you by the Ortho Institute is coming up next. Thank you for listening to Lions basketball on News Radio WJPF. We can do three breaks. The Carterville Lions pick up their first conference win of 2019 in a 9.54-45 win over the DuCoin Indians. A hard-fought game, especially that first half, the, the first quarter, actually, of this game. Um, at the end of the first quarter, it was tied 6-6. Carterville scored 20 second-quarter points, and at the half, they led the Indians 26-15, and then... In the second half, it was just a free throw back and forth the entire half. Carterville comes away with a nine-point win. Well, what was the Achilles heel for the Carterville Lions in the first half ended up being their savior in the second half. As Carterville was 14 of 21 shooting free throws in the second half, Carterville only had two field goals in the third quarter. So Ducoin had an opportunity to cut into that lead, but they weren't able to. Carterville ended up shooting 40% for the game. Ducoin ended up shooting 40% for the game. Rebounding Carterville, big, big domination on the boards. 33-15 to 15 over the Indians. Sumner led the Lions with 10. Six for Purcell to lead the Indians. Carterville, 19 turnovers. Ducoin, 17. Preston Sumner to go along with those 10 rebounds. He had nine points in the game. Good minutes from the big guy for Carterville. Well, we talked about Sumner, you know, since the season started, what he brings to this team, and he brings physical play underneath. He's not going to be a guy that's going to shoot those 10, 12-footers, but he gets the ball inside. He's hard to stop. Tonight, I thought he was very aggressive on both ends of the floor. He led the lines with, in rebounding with 10. Uh, so his aggressive play, I think, was in, in a large part uh, a big reason why they won this game. He was um, uh, one of our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal player stars of the game in the win over West Frankfurt. He, along with Bryce Anderson, lead the Lions in scoring tonight. They each had nine points. When you look at other uh, Lions on the board tonight, uh, Eli Downen with eight, Caden Hawkins had seven, Connor Hawkins had five, Nicholas Laird had six, Austin Garby had six, and Carson Pearson had four. The leading scorer for the DuCoin Indians, it was uh, Braden Purcell, and it was all second half points for him. He winds up with 19 in the game. He had 17 in the second half to lead the DuCoin Indians. Wade Roberson winds up with six points in the game. Brian Winters with two. You have Dasani Edward, who was in foul trouble most of the second half. He winds up with five with one three-pointer. They only hit one three in this game tonight. Of course, Carterville only hit one three in this game tonight. And uh, Caden Mays, he winds up with 13, 54 to 40. The final score. We're going to go on and take our second break here of our Ortho Institute postgame show. When we come back, Scott Hudson's going to name our Joe's Lawn Care right. and Snow <laughs> Removal star of the game. This is Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF.
goes back after this and one more 60 for Cousins. Okay. Carterville picks up win number two. They pushed their record to two and four on the season after the uh, 54 to 45 win over the DuCoin Indians. And at this time, we want to name our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star O the game. Well, as the case has been in, in all the Carterville games this year, there have been multiple players that have played a role in, in their wins. Uh, especially last week against West Frankfurt. That's probably going to be the case the rest of the year because this is a team that's not going to depend on one player. But I thought the player tonight who did it defensively and offensively and especially rebounding, and you don't really think of this guy when you think of rebounds, but Bryce Anderson, he had, what, seven points. He had eight rebounds. He was second in rebounding for Carterville tonight uh, to Sumner's 10. So oh, he had nine points. Nine, so points. nine points. Excuse me, nine points, eight rebounds. So I thought Bryce Anderson did a good job of handling the pressure tonight. Uh, there's obviously other candidates, but I thought Bryce Anderson's game, getting those rebounds when you're under six foot, that's pretty impressive. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe at 534-8148 for Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal. Bryce Anderson, our Joe's Lawn Care star of the game tonight, uh, operated by Joe and Lindsey McCann of Carterville for over 20 years. They specialize in com commercial and residential lawn care, landscape maintenance, tree trimming, snow removal. Plus, they do uh, property maintenance, bush hogging, equipment repair. 618-534-8148. Bryce Anderson, our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game. We're going to go on and take a...